my name is James Spencer and today we're going to be talking about downhill bike setup, the kit you're going to need on your bike and all the different components and what safety kit you're going to need. Right, so one of the most important features on the downhill bike is suspension. Up front here we have the Fox 4T factory series, it's got 200mm of travel, it's got high speed and low speed compression and it's got adjustable rebound. Um, it's really important to have a, a good suspension setup and you can adjust it to your riding. Uh, these are air forks, so you can take the top cap off, cap off and have uh, more air in or take less air out. Okay, brakes are a really important part of riding the uh, down bike. Um, on my bike I've got Shimano Saint, as seen here. They've got adjustable levers, so you can uh, adjust the reach here by using this. have got a really short handle, which makes it for one finger braking. Um, and then moving down to the uh, brakes, the calipers at the bottom, we've got a 200mm rotor. This can get really hot, so you need to make sure you have a, a nice big rotor so you can slow you down fast. And on the bottom, we have got XTR calipers. Um, on the top here, we've got extra cooling pads, uh, just so they cool the brake down and make it a lot more efficient uh, for when you're braking. Okay, so moving up to the cockpit of the bike. Um, start off, we've got uh, grips on the front here. These are truly designed ODI. They're really good, nice and grippy, both with the glove on and with the glove off. Uh, it's really important to have a good grip on your handlebars so you don't slip half while you're going over jumps around corners. Uh, handlebars, these are Truative boom bars. They are 760mm wide. Uh, so have a nice wide, wide reach on your bike. It gives you more control through the corners and over jumps and over rough terrain. So, and we've also got a 50mm reach uh, Renthal stem. This is uh, mounted directly onto the upper crown of the fork as well here. And then we've also got a Cane Creek headset. The headset moves uh, through the frame here on the top tube. And it just allows you to be able to move your bike with ease and gives you loads more control and it stops all the uh, crap getting into it as well, into the headset. So the next feature we're going to talk about is the drivetrain. This is probably one of the most important parts of the bike as it allows you to put more power into it and move, the, and move your wheels. So up front here we've got a Shimano C uh, crank arms and then on this we've got a Shimano XD pedal. These are clipped so that means your shoe will engage with the pedal and it'll actually lock your feet into it. So when you're going over rough terrain it uh, doesn't stop, stop your feet sliding around and they're also adjustable so depending on how muddy the track is or how dry it is you can have them really loose or really tight. Here we have the MRP chain device, it's got a bash guard on the bottom which protects the uh, cog here and the chain from you know rocks and roots in case you case a jump. Um, we are this cog here is a Renthal 32 teeth uh, cog and then moving up to the back here we've got a Z um, short cage derailleur uh, this is made by Shimano it's the one just below uh, Saint but it still works really efficiently as you can see when the trigger is taken off it can move with ease but when you lock it on it's a lot more tougher so this just stops a uh, train slap um, this is the cassette here. This is a Shimano Road cassette actually. It's a 10 speed um, and you can quickly fire all the way through the, um, the cassette moving into different gears. Uh, the trigger shifter, again is Shimano uh, Z. It's uh, one trigger shifting. So if you click it once up, it'll go up one gear and if you click it once down, it'll go down once compared to the Shimano Saint one, which uh, moves uh, twice. Now we're going to talk about wheels. <laughs> so again, another important feature. Uh, in the mountain bike industry, there's a massive dispute going on at the minute between 26 inch wheels, uh, 27.5 or 650B and 29 inch wheels. This is currently running a 26 uh, inch wheel rim. Uh, but a lot of people in the downhill mountain bike industry have now moved to 650B, so 27.5 inch wheel. This just gives you a little bit more stability on the bike. It just allows you to chatter over smaller bumps. But anyway, 26 isn't dead, isn't dead. But uh, we're gonna talk about the wheel now and get into the crux of it. Okay, so I'm currently running a tubeless setup. So what that means is there's a liquid uh, inside the tire itself and it's got a tube in it as well. So basically when the, say if you get a thorn, it goes through the tire wall and into the tube the sealant will then seal the tube 
and the tyre to stop any air escaping. Um, this is only possible on a stand uh, no tubes are in um, and you have to have a specific tyre setup as well. So I'm running currently running a Shawby Magic Mary tyre on it as well. It's uh, 2.35 inch wide and um, it holds loads of grip. It's good for all weather, so wet, dry um and you can have your tire set up at a different psi depending on uh how the track is running so if it's for example if it's really muddy and slippy you can have it on lower psi for example 18 so if it's a little bit drier and the track's running faster you can have it on a uh, psi like 25 for example so uh, the wheel is also running on uh, hope hub and this is made in the uk it's a really good efficient hub. It's open, so that means you can change the bearings on it if you need to, and um, it runs really smoothly. For example, that. So now moving on to the largest part of the bike, which is the frame. This is a Vinci Wilson uh, carbon frame, 2015. Um, as I say, frames vary from different manufacturers. Uh, run different carbon compounds uh, so for example da Vinci will run a different carbon compound to specialize um, they're both uh, going to be at the same strength but it's just making little tweaks in the bike for example lightness but there's also aluminium bikes for example uh, this GT Fury here this is a completely aluminium it's a complete aluminium frame and then there's no carbon on it but it's just as strong and just as durable and just as light as a carbon frame um, also, we've got this rear shock here. This is eight inches. Um, I'm currently, currently running a Fox DHX RC4. Um, as, I said, as I'm saying before, um, shocks range. For example, this is a cool shock, um, but you can get air. For example, on the GT up here, we have got uh, Fox's new air shock. And um, it's just preference, really, how you want to uh, set up your, your suspension if you preferred a more I don't know firmer spring choice you could go for this or if you want to have more adjustment you could go for the air, air shock they are around about 500 pounds to purchase a shock so it can be pretty expensive um, but as long as you get your setup good you're going to be flying down those uh, tracks uh, at uh, breakneck speed so yeah that's uh, the frame covered so in conclusion this is my downhill bike um, total build cost of this was £5,200. It is very pricey, but if you're looking for a cheaper bike, you can go to places like Specialized and they do low range uh, bikes that retail about £3,000, for example, the Status. Or this really good second hand market on a website called Pink Bike. You can go into the buy sell section of the website and then put in your details, your specifications of what bike you'd like, and they'll come up with a, a huge list of bikes that are for sale and they do a great range.